She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Jolene Sugar Baker, she's the trailer park queen. and welcome to the Trailer Park Test Kitchen. I'm Jolene Sugarbaker and I'm the Trailer Park Queen. I teach the world about real trailer park living. This is my fourth episode of Cooking with Jolene and in my past episodes I showed you how you can fool your guests with inventive ingredient substitutions and how to use things that you probably have in your cabinet and your refrigerator already. You know, we all work on a limited budget. I just went and bought gas today and it was like $4 a gallon. It's gotten so bad that I'm having to call AAA and pretend that I'm broke down. Hello, AAA, this is Jolene. I'm broke down and I have to meet my mechanic at the Safeway. Well, they, they sometimes believe me and they kind of tow me. But in these times, we've got to cut corners. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you things that you can cut corners just as easy. First off, we're going to start off with a, a great appetizer called baby food pate. You might want to say something fancy and just call it beef pate when you tell your friends about it because it sounds so much better. But it's great. It's easy to fix and it's made with baby food. Then we're going to do sh on a shingle. Yes, I said sh on a shingle. And, you know, most people call that cream beef on toast. And it's great. This jar of beef sits on your cabinet for who knows how long. And you can use it in a jiffy to make a great meal. And I'm going to show you how. And then, I'm going to follow that up with my pecanless pie. I'm going to show you how you can make a pecan pie without pecans. Do you know what you use? Corn chips. I'm going to show you in a little bit. So sit back and relax and welcome to a brand new Cooking with Jolene. You'll need the following ingredients. One jar beef baby food, garlic powder, graham mustard, black pepper, some salt, some cayenne pepper, Montreal steak seasoning, and something to make the top look pretty. Today I'm using sliced ripe olives. Making the pate is really simple. All you have to do is take your beef baby food and just dump that in a pretty bowl. I think I need a little spoon here to let it out. Let me see here. Of course I don't have a, there's a spoon. No, that one's dirty. That one's a spork. A spork will work too. I hate to get all tangled up there. I'm going to go ahead and put the beef baby food into this nice bowl here. And then I'm just going to start adding the seasonings to my, my liking. You can do this by your nose or your heart or whatever works when you're spicing without using the, the utensils like the tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead and add some Montreal steak seasoning, lots of garlic powder. This really gets a zing to it. Some of the ground mustard. Some cayenne pepper. This just kicks it up a little bit. Go. Little sprinkling of the salt. A 
little bit of the ground pepper. Just mix that around. And once it's thoroughly mixed, I just like to make it pretty by topping it off with, you could use some green onions, you could use some chives, you could use some, I don't know, some of the chow mein noodles on top would look pretty. But right now, I'm just using some of the black olives. I think that would look great on top of a cracker. There we go. This pate you can serve with the little bread rounds or the little Melba toast. Those are expensive. You can make those at home. But I just like to use plain old saltine crackers. And all you do is you just put some right on top of a cracker and just eat it. Mmm. Tastes just like store-bought pate. You should try this tonight with one of your guests. Next up, we're gonna make on a shingle. Well, our military named it that. I didn't. I like to call it creamed beef on toast. Sounds so much more classier. It's easy to make and all you have to have is stuff in your cabinet. You don't have to go into your fridge or freezer for the meat or anything. You use dry beef in this. So let's find out what ingredients you need to make creamed beef on toast. You'll need the following ingredients. You'll need a jar of dried beef, one fourth cup butter, some salt, some garlic powder, some black pepper, some Worcester sauce, or however you want to say it, about one pint of milk, and some flour. Making cream beef on toast is really easy. All you need is a saucepan. Oops. And put that on the oven there. And we're going to put our butter in there first, just about one fourth cup. We're going to melt that down, probably over medium heat here. Be sure to use a plastic spoon if you use this nonstick cookware because I think it gives you that Alzheimer's disease if you scrape it. I don't know. So we're going to mix around our butter here until it melts. Don't burn the butter. Don't get brown. We want just a nice melted butter here. Okay, we have the butter melted down nicely, and we're going to go ahead and add some of our flour here. About a half a cup of all-purpose flour. About one pint of milk, which is about two cups. Very easy. Add a little bit of the garlic powder for a little kick here. How about some pepper here? And some salt. This is the only time that you can get your salt in there for it to taste right. And I like some of this hot spicy grind stuff. I'm just going to put that on in there. You can use cayenne pepper. You can use hot pepper. You can add a dash of Tabasco sauce or whatever your hearts desire. This just gives it a nice little kick. Some of the Worcestershire sauce. About two teaspoons in there will work. And I'm just going to stir this around so it's nice and mixed. Now I have to put all of the ingredients in now except the dried beef and I'm just making sure that the flour and everything else is all smooth in the mixture. It's going to start to thicken like a gravy and that's exactly what we want it to do. Well, it looks like I'm using a whisk. That means there's Alzheimer's for somebody with this meal. I don't know.
Okay, it looks nice and smooth, and I smell the garlic and the Worcestershire sauce, and I'm just going to go ahead and add the, the dried beef to it. And the best thing to do is to wash this off with some warm water to resuscitate it a little bit. Okay, I have washed the beef off with a little bit of the hot water, and I'm just going to tear it a little bit here. There we go. And just put it on into our flour and cream mixture here. There we go. Now that we've added our beef, all we're doing is making sure that the beef gets a little bit more tender and actually resuscitates a little bit in the cream mixture. This is looking really great now. Nice and creamy. You want it to be able to drop off a spoon like that. You don't want it really thick. If you've added too much flour, you can add a little bit of milk to make it much more creamier. But this is just perfect right now. I'm going to go ahead and toast the toast and get ready to plate this up. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can save some money on your desserts. You know, has anybody seen how expensive pecans are lately? It's like $6 a bag. I can't afford that every time I'm, I'm craving a pecan pie. But I can afford a 99 cent bag of corn chips. Now, I know you remember my first episode where I showed you how to take them and make it into an entree. Today, I'm going to show you how to take corn chips and turn it into a pecan pie. Well, there's no pecans in it, so I call it pecanless pie. But I'm going to show you how next. For the pecanless pie, you need the following ingredients. Three eggs. Three-fourth cup of molasses. One teaspoon of real vanilla. A three-fourth cup of light corn syrup. Two tablespoons of butter. One tablespoon of flour. One nine-inch unbaked pie crust. And a leftover bag of corn chips. It's okay if they're crushed. You can go ahead and crush them up. You need about two-third cup. Making the pecanless pie is easy, and you don't have to be magic to do this. All you need is three eggs. One. Two. Three. You want to beat up these three eggs in the bowl so they're well mixed and frothy. We're going to add two tablespoons butter that has been melted in the microwave really quickly. We're going to add about three-fourths cup of the molasses. It smells really dark and lovely. It just is great. It's got a great flavor and it really makes this pecan flavor come out of this pecanless pie, even though there's no pecans in it. So we're going to go ahead and pour that three-fourths cup of molasses in there. Mix that around. Three-fourths cup of your favorite light corn syrup. and about a teaspoon or so of the vanilla extract. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I went ahead and crushed up the corn chips and I added about a tablespoon of the flour to it. Now the flour acts as, well, I think the word is suspend. It suspends it like your children are in school in the pie. So you want to make sure you can just 
make sure that tablespoon is well coated over those corn chips. Okay, I have mixed all the ingredients together and all that we need to do is pour it in the pre-made pie crust. And that's all the preparation it takes to make the pecanless pie, other than cooking it, which you'll need to bake at 450 degrees for 10 minutes, then reduce the heat to 350 degrees, and bake 35 minutes more until it's all firm like a pecan pie. On today's Cooking with Jolene, I showed you how to take a jar of baby food and turn it into a great hors d'oeuvre that no one will know the difference unless you tell them. It's really nice and spicy and it's great on a saltine cracker. You can dip it, you can use one of those little butter knives. Make it as fancy as you want. You could even serve it in a glass ashtray and people will think it's even more fancier. It tastes so spicy. Mmm. Tastes just like the pate that they hurt the animals for. It's good. Mm, I'm going to have some more. Today on Cooking with Jolene, I showed you how to make on a shingle. Or what I like to call cream beef on toast. And it came right off the stove top, just ready to be served. Go ahead and just ladle it up on your toast points. You can cut the crusts off. You can make them triangles. You can use multi-grain bread, you can use the dark bread, you can use the light bread, you can use any bread at all, and you just ladle some up on top, and I've got to taste this. Looks really good. Mmm. 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 That's good and very simple to make. Cream beef on toast. Then, I showed you how to take a two-third cup of crushed corn chips and turn those into a pecanless pie. Did you ever think you could make a pecan pie without pecans and use corn chips instead? We did that today, and don't be scared at home to try this. It tastes exactly like a pecan pie. I like to serve it with some ice cream. It really is good a la mode. So try it tonight and let me know at my website at jolinesugarbaker.com about your fun that you're having in your kitchen too, cooking the Trailer Park Way. Snap on all your blue eye shadow, watch out for that big tornado, get all filled with pride in the double wide. Visit my store at jolinesugarbiker.com.